All right, thank you, Ray. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Um, it's just awesome that we can come and do this and present present to you, Richard. I'm sure Ray just uh, gave you a little brief on, on who he is, but uh, I'll just go ahead and say it again. He's a four-time World Aquathlon champion. He's a 2012 Olympian. He's known as being the fastest swimmer in the world in triathlon. 90% of the time, he's out of the water first, and sometimes it's, it's very dominant. Um, we're gonna we're gonna just talk about a few things that that just get some insight into into how he became that way, and uh, study his stroke a little bit. So I've got a couple of videos for you uh, to just kind of give you an idea uh, of of how he does it in the water. Looks like we don't have sound here. This is Auckland. This is a World Series race in Auckland. And uh, it's just highlights of the race. But you'll see very quickly, this is the start. We'll talk about the start a bit. You'll see very quickly where Richard's at when I zo zo uh, zoom in on him. There he is. And then they'll show you uh, an expanded view. And you'll get to see. Look at that lead, nobody's even there. <laughs> it's coming out, and then you'll get a good view of the, of the field. Still all alone, and these are the best triathletes in the world. So he's diving in, back for the second lap, and here's the rest of the field, and there's Richard. <laughs> They'll zoom in on his stroke a bit. You'll see it's just nice, long, smooth strokes. All right, coming into transition, we'll talk about transition one a little bit uh, and ways to get your wetsuit off quicker, but that's just one little view. We'll jump to the other ones because we don't have a lot of time tonight. All right, let's get back to Microsoft Word. This is the London Olympics. This is London, and we'll fast forward it to the field. Now you know everybody's on their best form when it comes to the Olympics. So, all right, there's there's Rachel all alone up up there. It's the Olympic race, and we'll we'll see that stroke where Ray was talking about. Took a little backstroke in the Olympic race to take a peek at the rest of the field. Good look at the technique right there as well. It's really good to study what the best do because you can almost feel like you're doing it next time you jump in the pool. So coming around the buoy. And here in a bit. The brownies are somewhere back here. I'm sure Richard could tell you better <coughs> when we bring him up here. I can see Gomez in there. Gomez has a real specific stroke. Did you see that? Did I miss? Did I just get in the way of the backstroke? But, so that's the Olympics. And the last video I wanted to show you, the last video I wanted to show you was, some of you who came to my talk last time might have saw this video, but it's a slow motion of what, what I call the Varga technique because he has an interesting, a very interesting way of swimming freestyle. So we'll bring that up. All right. This is the European Games just this past summer. And I'll put it right on the section where I want to see. So Rich out in front as usual. And that's, that's at normal speed. But they're going to slow it down for us and we can get a real good look at the technique. Like I, t I told you guys last time, I was, I was in this race, but somewhere way, way <laughs> back here. <laughs> Drafted as usual. Yeah. Now look, they slow down the technique, and they'll get in front of it. 
Look look at those hands, that entry. And he likes to he likes to go big on one side and then glide on the other. So it's cool that you guys can see that live tonight. You'll see it tonight. All right. All right, so, so those are those are some of the clips just to uh, get a picture of what we're dealing with tonight. So enough postponing. Uh, let's bring out my buddy Richard. So everybody, please give him a hand. Let's bring on the questions. I'll, I'll put them on the board so everybody can see them. Thank you for a really nice welcome. I'm really glad to be here. And as I see, it's incredible how many people is here and how many people in, in England or in UK is really, really like the triathlon. And I'm really happy because I'm training with the Brownlee brothers. So I see how much influence they have about the sport, not just triathlon, but sports just general. So it's great, you're really active and, and you choose this way to get active. Yeah, that's the cool thing about the UK. It's, it's like, it's amazing how popular the sport is and it's just fun to be around. I mean, when I came here, it was refreshing to see the groups, the training groups, it's, it's really cool. So I'm sure Rich has got to enjoy that in Leeds with the, with the Brownies. But I was gonna just try to ask him a few questions that, that I came up with, feel free you guys to uh, ask some of your own questions because I'm sure you have them. But Rich, so how did you develop that technique of yours? We saw it in Baku, how you were kind of gliding. I'm, I'm sure it didn't happen overnight. How did you develop your swim technique? Yeah, exactly. It didn't happen over the night. And uh, it's happened since I was three years old. And I, I was swimming from three years old and developed my technique through all the categories and I was since I was 10 I was swimming already between 35 40 K and a half of 40 K per week and then when I was 15 it was lots of miles 138 K per week so swimming 138 K per week <laughs> yeah so it's not just that easy how it looks it's all about the uh, consistent work and be really focused and every year by year you can you can do something like this or like a brown list or maybe something like you, you're doing the work so so you can as well develop the technique as this way so it's just about repeating the same stuff and really focusing about your technique to be as most efficient in the water so that was long lots of drills lots of the same stuff every morning so it, it didn't came uh, over the night how you say but it's, uh, it's, it's about lots of passion and, and sometimes it's a sacrifice, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You, uh, Rich, um, like when we're looking at that stroke, it looks near perfect now, but are you still, like today, thinking about your technique when you're, when you're in training? Are you, do you think about your stroke when you're swimming? Yeah, exactly. I'm maybe one of the best or best on the world in triathlon, but I will now save as much as possible the energy so as, as better I get in the swimming, then I can say for bike and for run because you, you can with the, with the swimming, but you definitely can lose the race. And my, my focus in a race is actually to, to take as, as little people as possible uh, to take with me on the bike. So it will be not 30, 40, 50 people with me, but it will be five, 10 people, so the chance for winning or good result is much higher. So that's my point. So that's why I every day practice to be as more as much as possible efficient, to focus on my technique, what I'm doing, what the drills, why I'm doing this drill, why I'm not doing other drill, what is important and how can I get faster. So yeah, <coughs> um, it's really important because you can develop your fitness for a high level, but I already, develop my fitness in swimming, biking, we do lots of hours every every week. So the fitness, it can't go that much, but the difference is the quality. And with the quality and the focus on the on the technique, on the training is, is really important. 
Definitely, definitely. Um, some of us as triathletes think that the kick is not as important. Um, it might not be, it just depends. Rich, we noticed in those videos that you have a huge, massive kick. Um, is what, what do you say about the kick for a triathlete? Is it important to have a, a good kick? So I translate my kick in, massive kick, from, from swimming pool because I was a swimmer before and that was really important. But to be honest, the important in the open water swimming and, and triathlon swimming is not that much using that kicks. But for, for all of you, you think you don't have to use kick is is not true you have to use your kick but as much as, as possible efficient so you don't using the kicks that much massive kicks without without efficient without. so using using too much just from fl uh, flexibility from the from the knees where it just costs so much oxygen and your butt is is going down and you just uh, draw draw your body so that's the, the slow you don't you want to use little kicks which is and, and it helps your body position your streamline and also rhythm with the with the arms that's really important as well some people forgot how important is a rhythm and and hip motion in your core through the legs to to your arms so that's really important which brings us to the next question like what kind of cadence do you think is good in open water to have with with your stroke is it high cadence low cadence so this is really individual. For me, it's I having probably 16, 16 strokes per 25 in a, in a race pace, yeah. but in training pace, I'm using much less for developing my strength, my strokes, and be stronger with, with the stroke. So um, I'm used to the pressure from, from really slow <coughs> swimming, certain speed, but as much as, is as less as possible strokes. So when I'm using the higher cadence, I'm using the same length, but I'm going much faster. But the pressure is the same. Pre pressure on the hands. Pressure. You yeah, yeah. Or, when or you're or feeling position. the water. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. used to the pressure, but you go higher cadence and you get used to it. You have a right uh, technique and coordination. It's not going there. It's not going there. It's going straight on under your under your arms. So. This is the, the main thing what I'm using for you is really individual but for open water or swimming as we heard from lots of things it's really important f uh, to have a high cadence but you have to find what is your right balance because the, everyone has a different long arms everyone has a different efficient and um, the, the length the length of the stroke so it's just pretty individual. So it's pretty individual, yeah. but it's really important to have high cadence because I I, I will say example for in a or, or pool swimming you are turning every tw twenty five meters yes so you you little bit rest the arms when you are turning because you you push off the water you use little bit more kicks and then again. You, you're using arms so this is really good for the strength for the for the using power in a swimming but you can't use it in the open water because the strength the the power is cost uh, oxygen as much as more you lo uh, losing oxygen the endurance is coming back down so you, you're not you're not resting during the uh, open water swimming you swim swimming 1500 or 70 uh, 750 meters or Olympic uh, Ironman distance, half Ironman distance, but you're not stopping. You're carrying the arms is all the time in a in a work, so you don't wanna uh, overwork them. So that's why it's good to have uh, high cadence. Kind the of like another reason is is when you also swim next to each other, is is much easier for rhythm. To, to have a higher cadence. Oh, when you're drafting, yeah. Another thing is in open water, you swim maybe in the rivers or lakes or or in the sea, and you have a, waves. Wave. You have the waves. Yeah. As more you have waves, it's more important to have a higher cadence. That's what I learned from from the from the experience, especially when you go against the, the waves, and when you go 
with the waves back to the shore. It's really important to feel the water and sometimes go a little bit longer when you're so riding you can, the wave, you catch, yeah. you're catching the wave and you a little bit using that, that motion of the, of the sea. Nice, nice. Kind of like running. Yeah, exactly. So the start now when we're talking about racing, uh, usually we see you a lot of the times coming straight to the front. Uh, what kind of pace are you doing in that first 100, 200 meters, would you say, when you're, when you're going straight to the front of the pack in a World Series race? It's, it's really hard to say because obviously in the open water swimming is not turns, so it, you're losing a little bit, but I guess if I'm using the same effort on 25 meters pool, the first 100 would be maybe 53, 54 50. pace. And you just that, just that usually takes you to the yeah, front. That's, huh? that's what takes me in the front. So. <laughs> but it doesn't mean if if someone is open water swimmer and he can't do it on the on the swimming pool, he can't keep a little bit pace behind me because is example I'm really good uh, swim, a swimmer in the pool. I have really efficient uh, turns and stuff. So it's a little bit different. So. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, what if what if we're not that strong? What if swimming is our weakness, and you know we can kind of get scared of a massive start? Uh, would you say what would you what would you suggest doing? Is, do you think we should still try to go fast off the start, or should we save more energy and try to conserve? What, what do you think? So, is it another really individual question because we have seventy people here probably about, and every is a little bit faster, or someone is much faster, some someone is slower someone has a, a higher speed someone is better endurance and you have to find your strength and understand okay well, i'm a weak swimmer it's better to me to get a little bit back and don't don't get smashed by other people who is behind me and it's better swimmers so they drove you or i don't know it's, it can happen you know but it's better be a little bit back and save the energy for drafting in the legs in a in a in a in a hips. So using the best thing is when you know the field you're gonna race. So you have a friends here and you say, okay this this my friend is a little bit faster, maybe three seconds faster per per hundred. So maybe I might stay next to him and go as long as possible on his hips. Maybe it's slowing him down but it helps me. It's about the science is about 20 percent it depends of the speed you're using so when you're drafting you could save 20 percent you can save energy. 20 percent of energy and you can go the speed you would never go and you wanna in a professional triathlon that's the same for you you wanna keep with a little bit better swimmer as long as possible and if happen he's dropping you you go, you you move to the to the legs where, where he's kicking and you try and draft in and hold as, as long as possible. So you're using about 10, 10 15 percent. Right. So this is another option, but you, you, your saving energy is a little bit less. It's, it's so a good, it's so that's, that's a big advantage if you do the little bit. It, can draft it. It's, it's interesting, I had the privilege of uh, being in the same race as Rich in London in the World Series this past year. And he was, he was off the front, and Rich's pool times on, on a sprint distance are probably over a minute faster than mine. Easy. But in that race, because I was in a pack of fast swimmers, uh, I ended up coming out of the water like maybe 25 seconds back, which I would never be able to do in the pool. So drafting can make a big, big difference. It's really, really important, but always, when you want to draft in other people, you have to always look forward so also the tactically you have to think uh, there is a there is a boy first boy and you don't want to go there because this guy is taking me somewhere else because he's not looking forward so also you have to think about lots of things and how to move maybe to the other legs and it's lots of tactics is going there what, good point like what if what if you're swimming your own race and somebody is on your hips and they're pushing you away from that buoy. I mean, has yeah. this ever happened to you? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's actually happened to me in, uh, in London this, this year in World Series. It was New Zealander. He tried to be in my hips, sa saving his energy, slowing me down. And that's, 
So I try to a little bit slow down and r roll over him. Roll over him. Roll over him. <laughs> so I went over him. It's, I didn't slow him down. I just went different way because we went we went going out of our way, and he actually slowing slowing down all the field because here was the start line. We were moving like this. I was on the front, and he was pushing me to the to the other side. And here was the boy. So so I had to stop and and pass him because. He was actually exactly what I said, a little bit slower swimmer, but he could hang it on with on, me. On the draft, yeah. On the draft. On the draft. So we'll talk about that technique as well. There's a technique to roll over somebody and get to where you want to be without really, it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Have, have you ever had uh, somebody literally fighting you in the water? Has this ever happened to you? Uh, not really, but I heard from, from different experience from the boys. No. <laughs> I, I had a little bit on the training, and the the brownies try try show me how he's in in a in, in a tra you know in a racing. <laughs> I don't think he really knows because he's always up there by himself. But uh, it's 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 for people like like us who are in the pack that have to deal with the. Yes, Danny. You know when you say on the hips, do you mean like fingertips level with the hips? Is that the best position? I I would say it's a like half stride down. So so your 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 hand is coming very where his shoulder actually so maybe something like like this like yeah. this swimming like yeah, this so i'm catching catching the the water here and he is about here so it's all also for me really bad because i'm doing the wave is coming like that so he's on my wave that's the first thing and the second thing he's stalling my catch because the proportion of the water, the molecules, is all here, and I'm using it. But he grabbed the water here, so I have less less thing to, to hold. You know, less catch. Yeah. Less catch. Yeah. So, yeah, so dra draft on the hips actually will slow the swimmer down. Yeah. W what about when you draft? Drafting on the feet is pretty effective as well, though. Yeah, as mm -hmm. I said, it's about 10, 15 percent, yeah. and for me, it doesn't cost me anything. I, like when I'm on the front or someone is on the front. Is not slowing anyone down, mm -hmm. so you'll see. You'll that's, see. That's more, more better way to to draft in. But this hip is especially good for first 200 meters to to get out of the people and then find your own pace. Especially for age groupers, I would say uh, for you would be better because you're doing probably non-drafting a racing lots of maybe some is drafting but non-drafting is all about the time trail go go your your best pace yeah so you don't want to smash first 100 meters or 200 then over lactate and slowing down i i can say example i saw lots of age groupers to swim first 100 meters 115 pace 200 uh, 200 meters 125 and then he was swimming 150 and uh, his average was about 140 per 100 meters. But what if he starts swimming 125 and he holds 125 or 130? He would, he would gain uh, maybe feet, how much? Two minutes. Over, overall, so o overall, two minutes. And even yeah, pace, like and even, pace you know? even pace is is, yeah. is the best option. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's really individual, as I'm as I'm saying. If you if you're a good swimmer, you can draft in, and you choose the person you know to go with. You know what to what what will happen. Have to, a, yeah. a lot of times in the World C Series, we'll see we'll see Alistair and Jonathan right on on your feet. Um, have they ever said anything about uh, being drafting behind you? How's the what do they say? Is it is it easy to draft behind you or what? What are they what are their yeah. comments? The comment is, as we said, is I'm kicking law, so they a little bit losing the what, uh, the feeling where they are because they can't see f forward, they can't see my legs, they just see the bubbles and the splash, so they they, they they're losing the concentration where where they going, so it's a little bit hard for them. They they complain a little bit yeah, about yeah. the ways. <laughs> um, awesome, awesome. So. What about the end of the swim? Are you like the last 100, 200 meters before transition? What's going through your mind as you're coming close to transition in the water? So, I'm um, last 200 meters, 
I'm, I'm trying especially in the World Series uh, where the, the base is high it's always I'm looking back if someone is in my legs if I if I drag someone to make the the swimming um, breakaway the, yeah after swimming the breakaway on the bike so that's the, my point to take some people with me not go by myself because they will catch me anyway mm -hmm. but when when you saw the video in Auckland that was 2011 and I, I thought I'm a hero and I can bike on my own, but not really. <laughs> they catch me in a, in a 15, 15, after 15K and I was exhausted. So it's better to take someone with me and then use it, the power of the group and working together. So what was the, sorry, what was the question? So, so are you, ah, okay. the, the last 200, yeah. So I'm trying a little bit increase the pace and using my kicks a little bit less because Especially, you don't use in too much legs when you're swimming, but you wanna bring the blood in your in your legs before you you're running to the transition. So so we'll be kind of warm up the legs for for the running. It will be ready for running and for the for the uh, cycling length. So he's actually talking about actually speeding up a little bit towards transition, but that might not necessarily be the best option for everybody. Yeah. Sometimes you might want to actually just relax. kind of relax a bit relax. because you want to have a for, fast transition. For me, if I'm in a fifth position or fourth position, I would try as much as possible to relax and get, for sure I have to focus, okay, I'm, I'm gonna out, what I'm gonna do, where is my bike, and think about other things and get as much as relax before the bike because the bike is gonna be really hard first, first 5K. Like, uh, how do you have, what, what are the basic things to have a fast first transition when you're coming out of the water, if it's a wetsuit swim? Um, are there any tricks to get that wetsuit off faster, or, or does it start when you put your wetsuit on in a certain way? Uh, okay, so, so when I'm going to transition one, the first thing is take off the, ga uh, the goggles from my eyes on the head. Step one. So, <laughs> so that's the most important. Then you have a clear vision, and you know where you are, uh, and then you can, you can run, run away, take zip off, take the wetsuit down to the around the hips. That's the fir that's the fastest thing you wanna do. Then you have a uh, open shoulders. You you, uh, you relax. You can run as fast as possible to the transition. Then then before the box, taking off cap, hat and and goggles and putting in a box or. I think it's the rules pretty much the same for you guys. Yeah, just, yeah. And and then then I have I have cut the wetsuit on my legs, so it's pretty easy to take off. <coughs> you cut the just legs. You cut, cut the legs cut, on the wetsuit. Cut wet the legs with the scissors exactly. Also, like making the legs shorter. Yeah, like like on the half of the calves. Okay. It's pretty much. Yeah, so and also, for sure, you probably use it in, in your races. Some some glide, uh, vaseline. body glide, vaseline yeah. Yeah. And, under the, your, your wetsuit and then, then it's easy to take off the, the wetsuit. I know a lot of you might get invest in a really expensive wetsuit and you don't want to cut it but it will make it faster if you yeah. just cut part of that leg off. Actually the, the wetsuit these days designed is, is designed for it. They, they, they said it's, it's normal when you cut for how, how long your legs is. So we're at, we'll actually when we get on the pool, you'll show everybody how yeah, how yeah. to put the wetsuit on before yeah. before these little things make a difference when you get into transition. So yeah. cool. Any anybody else have any questions, Ray? I know you had a couple. Well, it's all the problem of mine because my big calves are pain in the neck. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to do is get my scissors out. So that's Definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, two questions. One is um, uh, how well I've not got much money. Right. I want to get a good track, uh, um, wetsuit. Yes. Yeah. I've got the wetsuit you've got. Yeah. Is there one, one or two wetsuits you think are pretty good? That for for a good price, like a cheaper a wetsuit. Price. Oh, mm. all the brands. Yeah. All the questions. If you can repeat the question. Oh yeah. So so the question was: Is there a wetsuit? Uh, that that is a, a cheaper price, but still a good wetsuit. So. So. Uh, I know, yeah, I know I you're I choosing think, Hugh. Yeah, yeah, I'm choosing Hugh, but uh, I mean, uh, every every brand has a different uh, levels, or you can ch you can choose what is your price and 
how much you can spend. So yeah, those, those early levels important. are not bad. Like the the beginning levels, they're still good wetsuits. I yes, mean, it's, yeah. it's good for for the basic swim. It's really good. Yeah, so now my other question this time of the weather, and it's it's something that hits a lot of us. Is how do you keep healthy? As well, you know, John, you know, keeping away from the colds or flus or, you know, you're using yeah. so much energy. And right. Is it, is it something that you do that makes you learn from like your recovery? Or yeah. What is it? So, how, how do you stay healthy, Richard, when it's bad weather like this? Yeah, so drinking when it's weather like this, we went yesterday, it was about minus two in, in Leeds and it was raining. I was like, how is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> this is possibly the worst weather ever. <laughs> and yeah, like my secret is like have a have a something a warm drink or waste tea or something. That's that's what we have when we stop on the bike or and always take some dry clothes when you go outside for three, four hours dry, right and you have a stop and you have some spare or base layers. So you, you get always a little bit dry. That's especially on, on the bike. And then, yeah, for sure, the really balanced food, eat healthy, quality food, that's that's the main thing. And enough sleep, I think. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the n rule number one. Because if you don't sleep enough, that's, that's everything is falling down. Definitely. Are you taking any kind of uh, vitamins or supplements or anything? Like really, really general, like probably all the people is multivitamins, vit vitamin C, and if it's needed, uh, iron. But yeah, this these two multivitamins and vitamin C extra is in this weather is is a key, I think. What about like protein shakes? And yeah, for sure. After after some strength training, is is good to have uh, some extra proteins. But I prefer more. Uh, quality food where it's all, all, all good good proteins, all good carbs and uh, the vitamins and minerals right. is in, in the food. So Just eating a balanced diet. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And, it's and pretty, pretty, it's not rock science, it's pretty... Pretty simple. Pretty simple, yeah. 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 Just be careful and, and also, if you mean healthy also with the injuries, there is, we train in so much we, we also as much recover we using the physio with uh we stretching all the time we using the rollers balls we, i have completely gym at home on the carpet just after the training i just two hours or one hour just staying on the floor to <laughs> to get my muscles loose and relax and be ready for next day get ready <coughs> and as well the other thing is the strength training, which is really I think for prevent of injuries. So yeah, we have a program where every people has individual strength training for his injuries, yeah, yeah. for his imbalances. Yeah. I was going to ask you that question. Do you do that all year round, or is it a particular time you focus on that? Is it Winter focus, so it's all year round. No, all all year round. You wanna be healthy all year round. You don't want you wanna be as much as possible consistent. So, so you're doing so injury best. prevention all year round. All 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 the time. Yeah, yeah. Sure. because the muscles is like probably brain. If you don't use it, it's really f fast for for forget, and then it's hard to to get back, isn't it? Yeah. But you can easy remember, but you have to consistently have to give give him impulse. So you don't use your your imbalance. You know this is not so good, and you forgot. Leave it for two months. You don't use it in doing some calf. I'm using especially for my calves, Achilles and <coughs> an arch uh, program. So if you don't use it, it get weaker, and you start running 20k a day, you get injured. That's that's pretty pretty easy, simple. So you wanna have all. All, always a <coughs> little bit strong that muscles to hold in a in a right way uh, in a running you know example because the running is the the, the highest risk of the injuries right, right. Yeah. yes Do you recognise any benefits from it, and 
do you also uh, superimpose your own experience and skills with other techniques? And if so, what are they? So the question is, is do you know, have you heard of the technique of the total immersion swimming technique? Yes. And, and do, you, have you, do you use it or do you use your, combine it with your own technique? Uh, what do you think about total immersion? Yeah, so I know this, this little bit of, about this technique. So it's about the smoothness, about timing. But I think what I learned is about get from one point to another and you have some sim certain rules in a swimming about body position, head, catch, is always the same. And for everyone, a little bit the different, the smooth swimmer, the swingers, the, you know, the both, the gliding and swingers, is up, up to the people how they learn, how they transfer, but it's always about few rules to hold <coughs> and then the, the rest, the, how, how you, how you how you show is just about you, I think, right. because you can you can see in a triathlon, ten 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 swimmers have almost ten different, pretty much the same technique, but they don't wanna have a have a mistakes like a crossover or or breathing backwards or looking looking straight. So you wanna you wanna swim half half. Uh, half goggles out, half goggles inside. That's the basic rule. But how you will do it, how it looks, is, is very individual. Because everyone has a different strength, different uh, mobility of the shoulders. So everyone uh, has a different little bit technique. That's a good question. Total immersion is something in the US especially we're real familiar with. And I think total immersion is great for, for people who've never swam before because it really teaches them how to become comfortable in the water. But I would say that once you get to a certain level, you kind of have to leave total immersion behind because it's not, it doesn't really train you how to, how to go fast. It trains you how to feel good, but it doesn't really train you how to go fast. So then you have to start developing your own personal technique, like Richard said. Correct me if I'm wrong, you can play dead spots as well. Yeah. If total yeah. immersion, you have these dead spots where you may be overgliding. Yeah, it's it's real about putting your fingers in perfect and all this. But like I said, it's brilliant for really getting comfortable in the water. But then you kind of have to move on. Can I, can I ask a question? I've forgotten this question. It links to that. If you were to give us three drills, swimming drills, what would they be? You know, your technique. That would help us. Three drills for swimming. Three drills. Okay, first one would be single arm drill. So that's that's really important. First thing is for the is good for the catch, for timing your strokes. So you know when when do you go, when you're taking off out the hand, you you move in with your with your head, and then exactly you, you move as well. So this is really good for timing as well, for a uh, body position and for the head position. So you have few drills together in this technique. And then another, we're using lots of sculling. Sculling. Sculling, which is, you can do on the front, on the middle, or a little bit, a uh, little bit back. Also we use it with a single arm. So you feel, really feel in the, the propulsion. <coughs> but I, my suggest is to use it with a, uh, with a snorkel, because people usually have a, when they want to breathe, they take a uh, head up <laughs> and his body position is falling down and the people is looking always on the front so the, the elbows is always dropping down. So what we want to, exactly the opposite. I saw 90% even in performance squad in Leeds, they doing wrongly this, this, this drill and I'm saying why do you do it? You're doing wrong. <laughs> and they just keep doing it. So I always use a snorkel and, and have streamlined position, looking a little bit up. And that's what, what you want a perfect body position. In the perfect body position, use your technique. So, so you it's do, always. You do the schooling as well? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's comforting yes. that because I think a lot of people think it's actually one of those just basic ones for oh, the no. swimmers. Uh, no, no. I've always felt that getting it's also really good for your strength or your hands mm -hmm. and for your uh, forearm 
it's maybe for some people it seems to be funny but but you get the coordination on the front that's what will carry you through the whole stroke really helps you feel that catch yeah it's really important yeah. Yeah. do you do do you do most of the kick drills with your head down as well There's a lot exactly of that would be my forward. third one which is one hand in a in forward head down kick in and it just just go half body <laughs> position and just just swimming out like that. The front, you're using a snorkel when you do it on the front because the tendency is a lot of people, especially when you use it. I'm, I'm changing, so sometimes with the snorkel, so you wanna just just relax, have a good streamline, and and using the kick, thinking about it's going coming from <coughs> this, and go really really high above the water, but then I took off and also thinking about the how to lie on the water with my head. So that's, and that's learn you to relax and also how to breathe in the water. So yeah, you have a three things you, you can develop with this, thing, with this drill. Mm -hmm. yeah. So nice. this is my probably favorite one. So that, that drill is funny that the last one he was talking about when I first met uh, Rich, I was swimming what I thought was a pretty fast pace and he was doing this drill next to me and he was kicking <laughs> He was kicking. I thought he was swimming normal, but I look over and he's doing this, moving his arm literally this slow. And I'm swimming about 108 pace, really breathing hard. And I see him over there just kicking face down, closing his eyes, enjoying life. And I'm like, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's, that's a good one. Yeah. Maybe the fourth one, when we're talking about this, as I, as I said on the start, my, my specialty is using or uh, some part of the interval trainings with, uh, with the count stroke. So using certain speed, 120, 115, 110, whatever, and, and using, for example, eight stroke per 25 or seven, six. It depends of your fitness, for sure. But you wanna, you wanna as, as less as possible. I'm no, no one will swim like this, but I, as, as I said on the start, that will help, help you De develop your core muscles, your, your strength on your arms, on your legs, and efficiently in the a, in a water. So then, when you have a race pace, you're much, much better, you're much higher, and you're much better swimmer. Right. And another thing I would advise would be, because from the squad and everyone, it's good to swim all four strokes. It's really important, mm. because Phelps maybe was focused, I'll give an example, was focused on the butterfly, but he could swim all four <coughs> disciplines, and each discipline is is supporting the another one. Right. So that's that's the thing. Don't swim just just freestyle. Try the other one, and that without knowing, you get improved with on the freestyle on the specific uh, discipline that, that you want to so use true. for. That's so true. Sometimes when you swim another stroke, something while you're swimming, for example, breaststroke or butterfly. Mm -hmm it'll click in your mind and then when you go to freestyle you're like oh so that's how that catch works so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've known that in my own swimming so is there any other question any other yes do you shave your legs, <laughs> uh, you shave your legs? or maybe one two times a year it's not going really well so <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's plenty of traffic that do but the, this guy and the people in, like the brownies, they're famous for having hairy legs, so he's one of those. You know. yeah. so. Real men have hairy legs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Richard. So, well done. <laughs>